All right, guys, I just got back from school and I'm uh, finishing up editing this video here. And uh, there is a few things I want to mention before we get into the video. And uh, the first thing is that uh, whenever I made this video, I was a bit sick, so my voice is a little deep and rough in the video. And uh, second thing is that in the title, I know it says 15 year olds trophy room tour. And uh, um, I'm actually 16 now, but I had all these trophies back when I was 15. And I meant to get around and make this video last year, but I just didn't. So. That's that, but uh, in this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys kind of like my background, how I got introduced to hunting and how I met Gooch and all that, and then I'll be showing you my trophy room and uh, telling you about all my trophies and uh, plugging in footage from those hunts and putting in the video. And uh, some of the footage has like never been seen before. So some of it might not be the best quality, but if you guys will, please go follow my Instagram. I'm trying to get my followers up, but uh, I'm going to be posting some uh, photo dumps from these hunts, and uh, if I have time, maybe some cool reels or something, so stay tuned for that, and uh, with all that being said, I'll let you guys get into the video. Alright, so my dad introduced me to hunting when I was really young, and uh, before I could ever hunt, he would take me out deer hunting and turkey hunting, and we actually ended up killing some nice deer together. We have a nice 10 pointer downstairs, and I think a couple other deer that we shot together. So my dad got me addicted to hunting and all that when I was really young and I think at the age of six I shot my first deer. It was a big old 11 pointer, big old spike, but uh, um, and then at the age six or seven, I don't think I was six when I got my first turkey, I think I was seven. So at the age of seven I got my first turkey and it was a nice little jake and just from then on I just got addicted to hunting and being outdoors and all that and uh, I gradually started killing bigger deer and bigger turkey. So that's kind of how I got introduced to hunting, and now for how I met Gooch. Um, so me and my dad have always kind of watched Moose Whitetail and THP and all that, from, even went back from when they just started. And uh, so eventually we saw Gooch as an intern on THP, and we're like, hey, I think that guy kind of lives around here, whatever. And so I slid into Gooch's DMs and uh, <laughs> and uh, hit him up. I'm like, hey, I think I live pretty close to you. You want to go hunting and make a video sometime or something? And uh, so we ended up going coyote hunting or whatever and just kind of from then on it's just kind of taken off and we've been deer hunting turkey and we've done all that so but Gooch kind of encouraged me to get into the whole filming and editing and all that I don't know I think I was 14 I bought my first camcorder I saved up enough money from mowing yards and whatnot but I finally bought my first camcorder and uh started videoing my hunts and all my adventures and uh I guess I'll uh, take you around the room and show you guys all the trophies I got in here all right, so on top of my dresser, I have that picture that I showed you guys earlier of my first deer. And then I have a picture of me, Ted, and Gooch. This is when I just met Gooch. This is Lucas. Lucas Facebook messaged me probably like six months ago and asked if uh, we could get together and make a video. I was like, sure. So we're finally getting together. Ted's behind the camera. We're going to go hunt some piece of ground that Lucas has permission on. So it should be an awesome morning. Good job, hey, good job waiting for a good shot. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> oh boy, good shot. <laughs> you were shaking like a leaf. I know. I love Double it. Double beer. Double beer, let's go. And then my bear school. Me and my dad have been going up to Minnesota for a long time now, and uh, this is my first bear I killed.
that bear was my first bear and my only bear as of right now so that was pretty cool but then moving on here back here i have a elk -a -dare turkey calling contest trophy so basically we have a uh, local turkey calling contest around here and uh that year i won that trophy i ended up winning the younger division which i was in and then the older division too so i used to be really good turkey calling and i still am but i just can't do it with my mouth anymore back in the day or a few years ago i used to be able to do it with my mouth really good and i used to calling some turkeys and win some trophies with my just my natural voice or whatever which is pretty cool and I think we might have a couple videos of me calling or whatever I don't know if it's with my natural voice or not but I'll show you guys those videos and your favorite call this is a buck I uh, killed when I was Gee whiz, how old was I? I think I was like 13 when I killed this buck. It was a piece we had permission on. We had like one picture of him. And uh, I went in there in the opening morning of uh, youth season with my rifle. And I had been seeing this buck quite a bit during archery season. I could just never get close enough or whatever. So I went in there youth season with my rifle and uh, got up on top of a ridge. And right as it was breaking daylight, I uh, hit the grunt call and kind of, I was sitting on the ground. So I had scraped and leaves and stuff. And uh, of course, I could have shot him with my bow because he came to like 20 yards, but I ended up nailing with my rifle and he went about 40 yards and uh, tipped over and I was really pumped. And this was before I uh, filmed my hunts and stuff. And uh, so I, th I think I took a video on my dad's phone, I think it was, because I was all by myself. I had my hunter certification and everything, but. Oh, I thought I heard something up in the ridge in front of me. And. <laughs> And so I grunted and kind of scraped the ground, and the big old buck came to like 20 yards straight downhill, right down there. And he started smell smelling the air, and I couldn't, it was so brushy, I could barely get a shot. But I finally found a little hole, punched his shoulder. He didn't drop, but he ran out in this field over here, and then he's, he died. But, oh, that's the first year I saw giant he's got a sticker on his he's got a split his g2 and i think he's got just trash and lots of points but he's a giant <gasps> that is a oh huge deer look at that body that is a lot of bass <laughs> oh my goodness lucas that is, that is a <laughs> huge buck day you see them. oh my <laughs> look at the mass he's so heavy I was thinking that about passing. There's a lot of bass on his main beat. Oh. We got pictures of him. You do? Look yeah, at that. Yeah, and that dude. Is that the 11 one, two, pointer? Three, yep. Uh, that he saw on his. That's 11? Yep. He got a split, split G2. Back G2. Here. That's. Here, so I kind of grunted and scraped the ground. And uh, I heard something making a rub, and the tree was going crazy. So I look up there and get my scope on him. And I think I saw, I saw, I mean, I, I saw a big rack. I didn't know how big it was exactly, but he made a scrape and came down the hill right to me. And, Shot about like 20 yards. And he ran about 60 yards and tipped over. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> so this is a pretty cool deer. Got that nice little split in the G2 there, as you guys can see. But crazy mass, like the mass and the brow tines are just what gets me. Like if you hold up this deer and then like my 174 inch buck, like this one's way heavier just cause it has like that much more bone. It's just so heavy. Like even throughout his main beams, it's like so thick. But um, as for how old he was, we're not really for sure how old he was. He had to have been old just to how, like how massive he was and stuff. And his teeth look like extremely wore out, but. Alrighty, so moving on to the next year here. This is a buck I killed two seasons ago, I think now. I think this was two seasons ago. So this buck we had um, on our other property across the road like all year. I had tons of pictures of him, and uh, and then uh, later in the year, I was like, I hadn't hunted in like two weeks or whatever. I was really busy with school and basketball and stuff, and um, I went out not expecting anything to happen. And the first year I saw it more than it was this buck, and I have actually videoed this hunt, so I'll show you guys parts of that. But really nice deer, and uh, this is the first one I ever got in film, so I'm pretty proud of it. But.
Mer I just Hello? shot I just shot that big ten pointer. Hi bud. Hi, I just shot that big ten pointer. I can't hear you. <laughs> I just shot that big ten pointer. Say it again. <laughs> I shot the what? big ten. You shot the big ten? Yes, the one that was behind our house like a w couple weeks ago. Oh, is that like the big one? Yes, the big one. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap. Jeez, Lucas. <laughs> oh, the, I didn't think he had this much mass. Are you kidding? Well, it wasn't supposed to be that good of a morning, but I ended up seeing like 10 deer in this guy, so it's a pretty great morning. <laughs> this is my first like big bug of my bow, like on my own. And you self filmed it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a little sloppy, but you pulled but... out something most, most guys can't do. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? You sure? I would a lot. say yes. His yeah. threes are longer than his twos, and yep. his... the way he curls around there too. He gained a bunch though since last year. Man, his G4 on that side. Even the way that beam is shaped with the tines coming off, and look how yep. it's got that. This one comes in. Yeah, they curl around. But uh, for the next buck, this guy, um, he's a little bit smaller. But this was like, this is the first buck I ever shot on myself. It wasn't on film, and I think I was 12. When I got my um, hunter certification that year, and uh, went out, harvested this guy with the bow. He's cording away real hard, it's right last light, and I just put it right in his back, and uh, he only went 100 yards. But uh, this is my first deer that was Pope and Young, so over 125 inches, and I have a little plaque here in the background that says all the stats and stuff like that. But Pretty nice deer. His uh, right side's a little bit weaker than his left, but uh, pretty skinny. He's really skinny. He had a huge body on him, and we were thinking he was four, but he might have been three just because he's so skinny. But some of that is genetics and stuff too. But and now, moving on to the 174 inch buck I shot last year. <laughs> oh man, I haven't held this guy in a while. I think so. So we have trail cam pictures of this buck from when he was three years old. And I'm pretty sure he's five or six right here. And uh, same story with this buck. Had a bunch of pictures of him across the road and then I ended up shooting him behind the house. So we got pictures of him when he was a three year old and then he kind of disappeared throughout the season. Then as a four year old, um, he disappeared for us. We never saw him, but our neighbor got one picture of the buck early season. As a four year old, um, later that year, we ended up finding his sheds. And you can just see like, all that trash there in the inside. And pretty lucky to be able to not have any pictures of him and find his sheds, so that's pretty cool. So, and then the 2020 season came around and same thing, we didn't get any pictures of this buck, not one. So I ended up just going out one morning. This is the first morning that I'd like ever used my new saddle and sticks and all that. And so I was really excited to try that stuff out. I think it was like 30 minutes after sunrise or something, but I just tickled my black rack together, my antlers. And uh, this guy came in and he's about 40 yards away or whatever and I just wasn't comfortable taking that shot so I uh, waited and then about an hour later I see him cross like this ridge top like way down there and so I rattled again he marched into like five yards and I wasn't able to get on film because my camera arm wouldn't go around the tree but um, I was like I'm not messing up in this buck because he's big so um, I just kind of said forget about the camera, there's really nothing I could have done anyway. And uh, I uh, got my bow on him and shot him at five yards. And it's my biggest buck to date and it'll probably be my best buck for a while. So it's a buck of a lifetime. So, But it's honestly just a God thing because like we can get one picture of this buck like anywhere. He got up in the stands, the first buck I saw. Yeah, I was really excited when I shot this buck. Oh my goodness. I just started like whimpering or something. I don't even know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll 
put that footage on, but I just started like, like this. I don't know. I got really, I got so excited. I was like, oh my gosh. I was on the verge of crying. Like, I was like whimpering and just, <laughs> I was tearing up and all that. So, this is a really special buck to me. Um, he scored 174, just a tad shy of Boone and Crockett, but this is just kind of a rough score my dad did. I'm sure if we, it was like scored like by a professional, they would have to take off a lot of deductions and all that, but and it probably wouldn't score as much. But just a rough score, counting all the points, no deductions, it uh, scored 174. So that's my big buck. But this is like my favorite tying on this buck is this little crab claw on the inside right there. It's just, I don't know, it's very cute. <laughs> but, so I'm very blessed to have opportunities and land and just that I'm able to hunt all these deer and actually kill some of these things, man. Now, I will show you guys a couple deer that aren't quite as big, but they're still pretty special, or sort of. This guy is not that special at all. <laughs> So this deer, I uh, shot last year. Uh, it was the last day of use season, and last day of use season for me for like forever because I aged out of it this year. But this buck, we've been having like this six point genetics on our farm for the past so many years. And there's always at least one or two bucks that look like, that look really stupid and are just like six points. So um, we obviously had this guy across the road. We've had him for two or three years and I think he's three or four, I think he's four, but it was later in the season. I'm like, man, I, I'm just gonna take out this guy. I had a, I already had a really good season and killed this buck. So I was like, I'm kinda gonna do a little man chun and uh, take out this buck to help our genetics a little bit. But big old stupid six pointer, man. <laughs> but I thought I got rid of all the genetics, but apparently this buck bred several does last year. And now we have like stinking a bunch of small ones that are running around, like two and three year olds that are, look the exact same. So that's kind of frustrating, but. And then this buck right here. This buck was very special. It was a very fun hunt. Me and my buddy Levi, we went out and uh, we ended up passing the, this deer the first time we saw it. And uh, it ended up walking by. I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to shoot that. And uh, we went back to the house. We, we were like, man, that, that buck is pretty mature. So we uh, went back out the next morning and uh, <laughs> It was just really funny because I was with my friend and we were eating like, we had like a foot long Snickers bar. I'll throw in a few clips of that, but we had like a foot long Snickers bar and we were eating it and we were just goofing around. We weren't even really hunting like, or we weren't being that too, like too serious or anything. And then this guy walked out again. I'm like, I'm just going to shoot it. This is a fun hunt. So. It's one already. Three pounds. It's <laughs> He's down, baby. Oh, Smoked him. Smoked him. Oh. Dude. Freaking smoked him, baby. Dude, you just smoked him. That's a big eight, baby. High five. Let's go. Smoked him, baby. I didn't think it was going to happen. Bro. I didn't think it was going to happen. That scared the crap out of me. He just came out. I must Let's go. go. Let's go. Pretty nice deer. Um, not the biggest buck ever, but really nice, respectful deer. All right, now we're moving on to the last deer. It's a crazy deer, but uh, this buck I shot with my dad when I was, I was like nine or 10. I think I was like 10 years old or something. It was opening morning gun season, we were at my name and papa's, 
and uh, we were in the CRP field, and we had a blind we were going to set up, but we couldn't see over the CRP. So we ended up getting on top of the hay bale, and set, we set up our blind on top of this hay bale, and it actually worked really good because first light, we had like four does coming out of CRP, and uh, this guy was right behind those does, and I gained 50 yards, and I shot him. In the previous like few years before I shot this buck, I, uh, shot, I was shooting some pretty small deer, and my dad was like, make sure this is a big buck, because I always get upset myself if I shoot a small deer. I'm like, dang, wish I wouldn't have shot that, because then I can't really shoot another one for a while. And uh, my dad was like, make sure this is a big deer, and this one you want, you want to shoot or whatever. I'm like, dad, uh, it's a big deer, it's a big deer, because he couldn't see it yet, because I had the scope of the gun, and I was looking out in the CRP, and I'm like, dad, it's huge. I, I was like hyperventilating, and I was like freaking out. And my dad's like, make sure it's a big buck. Make sure it's one you want to shoot. So it comes out, and my dad sees like these Coke cans coming out of his head, and he's like, holy cow, you better shoot that or I'm going to. So I ended up shooting it. It went about 20 yards and tipped over. And uh, I think this buck was, oh geez, about dropped it. Well, it actually was only like 150 inches. It was because his G2 was broken off on this side. But me and my dad, we ended up rebuilding this uh, G2 or whatever, because it was broken. We watched a couple videos online, and we just got some epoxy and like a wire and drilled a, ho drilled a hole down the horn and we put wire and then uh, and then I put the epoxy around it and like shaped it and stuff and it turned out pretty good because I didn't tell you it's pretty hard to notice you know but we just made it as long as the other side because that's just kind of like what, what do you think it would be but we never had any pictures of this buck or anything he just kind of showed up during gun season behind some does and with this G2 he is 164 I think he was pretty cool pretty unique deer as you can see on this side he's got like those drop tines or whatever and uh, we're thinking in velvet season he uh, somehow injured his antler there and it kind of went crazy so that was kind of a little run through through all these deer and stuff but I don't think I said all their scores so this buck was 156 this deer was right at 150 and then uh, this buck was like 139 or 136 it says down here 136 and then this buck we haven't officially scored him yet but he's 174 and like six eighths or something like that but well guys i think it's about it um i do want to give a thanks to gooch because he's taught me just about everything i know about editing and that whole side of getting new videos up on youtube and all that so thanks to him for teaching me how to do all that stuff but i have been getting a few requests to do like a gear breakdown video and so um, me and Geech have been getting a lot of new gear lately too and stuff, so I'm probably going to be doing a video about that soon, hopefully. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, oh, hold on a second. And don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. See you in the next one. Peace. Oh. Holy crap. So I uh, slid into Gucci's DMs. <laughs> so I uh, slid into Gucci's DMs. Um, <laughs> I was like, hey, what's up, Gucci? That sounds weird. <laughs>